Simon, what global smaller companies offer investors today, which large companies aren't? Well, I think, first of all, uh, small caps are offering what they always offer in terms of advantage, which is that they have, over time, a faster compound growth. Uh, and now that's really because they, are, of course, are starting from a smaller base, whereas large companies suffer from a law of large numbers, or another way of saying trees can't grow to the sky, because every year they've got to found such an enormous number of new customers or revenue streams just to keep that revenue growth going. Small companies don't have that problem for many, many years. Uh, in fact, that's probably why small caps tend to outperform large caps over time. Over the last 20 years, up to 2019, uh, small caps uh, in our space, which is the global space, actually uh, generated double the performance of large caps over that period. But more interestingly today, um, it's uh, been noticed that small caps have actually underperformed large caps since the beginning of 2019. Um, and that has actually started to change in September, and small caps got uh, even more of a boost since uh, the vaccines were announced at the beginning of November. Uh, and now, clearly, this doesn't tell us anything about the future, um, but I think it is an interesting development, and it's potentially because people tend to buy small caps when we're coming into an economic recovery, because they tend to be more pro-cyclical, simply because they're less diversified and more reliant on external funding. But I think it's an interesting observation uh, in the present moment.